Okay, welcome to the second talk. So it was already mentioned, this will be done, uh, video recording will be displayed by Wilma Ricciotti, joint work with James Cheney of Edinburgh. And you changed the color of your shirt. <laughs> in the video it's red, but live he is in, in yellow. So I now start the uh, recorded video. Thanks. By Ricciotti and I will be presenting to you strongly normalizing higher order relational queries. This is joint work with James Cheney. And uh, um, as you can tell from the title, it's uh, about a theoretical result that is strong normalization with uh, important practical applications uh, pertaining to uh, relational databases. And uh, More precisely, this talk is uh, about proving strong normalization for Ezra Cooper's uh, higher-order nested relational calculus, uh, NRC lambda, uh, which is a calculus uh, which provides uh, useful theoretical foundations for programming languages and particularly functional programming languages, uh, providing seamless uh, querying of databases of database systems. In particular, the language integrated query facilities of links a programming language developed uh, at the University of Edinburgh, are essentially a concrete implementation of an RC Lambda. Uh, this uh, talk uh, will discuss uh, the strong normalization proof, which is in the Girard Tate style. And in particular, the main contribution is, the, is an extension of uh, a proof technique called top top lifting. I will start by introducing the calculus NRC lambda, then recall the notion of uh, Girard Tate reducibility, and then proceed with uh, 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 describing our extension of the top top lifting technique with uh, branching continuations. So, uh, NRC lambda is uh, a calculus that uh, provides foundation to integrate database queries into functional programming languages, and it does so by providing collection types that I will uh, denote uh, by these uh, uh, blue curly braces to mean uh, collections of, of elements of type T. Blue braces are used to distinguish them from uh, the uh, meta-language sets that will be for, for which I will use black braces. The calculus also provides uh, comprehension expressions uh, that are used to compute uh, over collections. An important result about this calculus is that uh, uh, it's normalized the flat expressions are isomorphic to a basic SQL fragment and can be easily translated to SQL. And this is uh, all implemented in the Lynx programming language. You don't need to know everything about the syntax of NRC Lambda, but the most important thing is, is that it is an extension of the simply typed Lambda calculus with uh, uh, records with, with uh, named fields and uh, with uh, the type of uh, collections of elements of type T. And uh, in particular, you will need to know that uh, the terms of this calculus include besides uh, the basic terms of the simply typed lambda calculus, uh, the following terms uh, to build the collections, empty collections, singleton collections, union collections, and most importantly, comprehension collections. And uh, the semantics of comprehensions is perhaps better understood by looking at the typing rules, at the typing rule at the bottom right. This typing rule says that when you have uh, a collection N of elements of type S and in uh, an extended uh, context uh, with uh, a variable X of type S, uh, the term, a term M is a collection of elements of type T, then the grand union of uh, all the M where the variable X has been replaced with elements of N is also a collection of type of elements of type T. There are many rules, rewrite rules in uh, this calculus, and uh, I have here uh, put some uh, of uh, the rewrite rules concerning collections. The first two 
uh, in the first two you may recognize uh, uh, some uh, monadic identities. In particular, the, it's important to look at the second law that deals with uh, nested comprehensions uh, and is essentially an associativity law uh, allowing us to move uh, the inner comprehension from the right to the left. And uh, the third rule states uh, distributivity of comprehensions uh, with respect to unions. And uh, these two reduction ro rules are, are important for the rest of the talk. And uh, I also want to mention that the normal forms uh, of expressions with flat relational type, that is, uh, collections uh, of tuples, uh, are isomorphic to uh, SQL queries composed of uh, unions of select statements. How do we prove strong normalization, even for simpler calculi, like the, sim like the simply typed lambda calculus? So if we want to prove that a well-typed term is strongly normalizing, then uh, the obvious way to do that would be by induction on the derivation of uh, the typing judgment. However, this uh, wouldn't work, and uh, uh, everybody knows of that uh, performing this induction directly to prove strong normalization doesn't yield induction hypotheses that are strong enough to prove the uh, to prove this statement. Instead, in these cases, what people usually do is to try and prove confusingly a stronger sorry a stronger statement. Uh, by proving a stronger statement, we get a stronger induction hypothesis, and this often works uh, uh, in a, a number of proofs that don't work by uh, direct induction. So in this slide, I'm uh, denoting the stronger statement by an unknown predicate P. We prove this unknown predicate P by induction on the typing judgment, and we hope to obtain uh, strong normalization as a simpler corollary of the unknown predicate by induction of the type. Uh, of course, we must find such a predicate P and uh, uh, one predicate that uh, works pretty well is uh, reducibility that I will denote here uh, by saying that uh, M is within the set of reducible terms of type T. And uh, how is uh, reducibility defined? For the simply typed lambda calculus, we only have to consider atomic types and function types. The base case is atomic types. Terms uh, of an, ato an atomic type are, strong, uh, are reducible if and only if they are strongly normalizing. And uh, for functions uh, from type S uh, to type T, we obtain uh, uh, the definition by induction, and we say that uh, such a function is uh, reducible if uh, when it is applied to any term, any reducible term of the right type, S, it produces an application that is reducible of the output type, T. So this, this is uh, uh, a way to express reducibility uh, at a composed type uh, by means of reducibility in the simpler types using the elimination ru rule for the type. The elimination rule for functions is function application. And uh, you can see it as a template that works for other types as well, like, for example, Cartesian products. And uh, we can prove uh, useful properties of reducibility by induction on the type T. Uh, these, the most important properties uh, are the following that in the literature are described by CR1, CR2, CR3. CR1 and CR2 are quite simple. They just state that reducible terms are strongly normalizing and that uh, uh, a reducible term always uh, reduces to a reducible term of the same type. However, CR3 is uh, a bit uh, uh, more complicated. In fact, some, it, some, sometimes it's difficult for some people to remember it. CR3 
uh, states uh, a closure property for neutral terms. So if a term is neutral and uh, all of its uh, contractor are reducible, then that neutral term is also reducible. We need to understand what a neutral term is. Neutral terms are those that can be pl plugged into any context without creating new redexes. And in particular, this, this excludes uh, introduction rules because uh, every introduction rule within an elimination rule uh, creates a redex. The introduction rule for, uh, for, for functions, for example, is uh, lambda. When you place a lambda inside a function application, you obtain immediately a beta, a beta redex. However, in the case of collections, we can see that elimination rules, that is comprehensions, are also not neutral because there is a reduction rule that acts on nested comprehensions. Okay? So if for collections, uh, introduction rules and elimination rules are both uh, uh, not neutral, this means that CR3 is of little use to prove, uh, to, to prove reducibility for collections. Since CR3 is not enough, maybe we can uh, prove properties, uh, we, we will need a different way to prove properties of collections. Uh, luckily, there is a technique uh, called uh, top-top lifting that was origi originally proposed uh, for generic monadic types at that, and, and whose uh, purpose is precisely to deal with uh, reduction rules of this kind. The idea is that uh, we will define reducibility for collection types uh, in uh, a completely different manner by using uh, an auxiliary concept of uh, nested elimination contexts uh, that I will denote with K. And we will actually use uh, uh, two steps. The first step, uh, which is top lifting, uh, defines what a reducible nested elimination context is, which is a K that, uh, when it is applied to singletons of reducible elements, will yield a term that is strongly normalizing. And uh, the reducibility for collections will be defined by means of the top top lifting step, saying that uh, uh, a reducible uh, a collection is reducible if, uh, when applied to a reducible nested elimination context, it produces a strongly normalizing term. Actually, the lexicon for top-top lifting uh, calls these nested elimination contexts uh, continuations, but their definition is essentially what, what I've told you, that is that the base case is the trivial uh, context uh, composed of a, of a whole, and uh, then we have uh, complex continuations that, that are obtained composing a simpler continuation with uh, a single uh, uh, comprehension frame with a hole in, the, in, in its generator. Why is this definition good? It's good because it allows induction on the size of the, continu of the continuation. Since we can see that reducible continuations are strongly normalizing, it also allows induction on the maximal reduction sequence of continuations. Uh, whenever we plug uh, Whenever we plug a term into the continuation, uh, we can reduce the apply the continuation by reducing the term. And we would also like to have the property where uh, we can, when we're given an apply the continuation, we can reduce the continuation. However, this will not work, and it, and it won't work because a continuation, because the set of continuations are defined like this does not it is not closed under reduction and it's not closed under reduction because we have the distributivity law of comprehensions with respect to unions which can duplicate subterms and in particular it can duplicate a whole and since continuations are defined in such a way that only one whole is allowed then the contractum 
of a continuation is not necessarily a continuation. So the problem is that uh, we would want the contractum of a continuation to be a continuation, but uh, uh, at the same time, uh, we also see that uh, if we allow that, and uh, we have a continuation k with n holes, and we plug at the same the same term in the same term m in all of the holes at the same time, then reducing m will produce a term that we can only reach after n reduction steps because there are n copies of m, so we need to reduce k applied to m n times to obtain k applied to m prime. Uh, so we devise a solution to this, which is uh, which consists in allowing indecise the holes and requiring the holes to be linear. That is, if there is a, if we have a, a hole with index p, and every other hole must have a different index in the same continuation. Surely, given the fact that uh, subterms uh, uh, can be duplicated by reduction, uh, the linearity condition cannot be preserved under reduction, but this uh, is relatively simple to deal with. So if we have this situation in which a hole with index p is duplicated by the distributivity law, we can take the contractum, perform a renaming so that all of the holes are linear. So for example, p has been, the two p's have been renamed, the first one as q and the second one as r, and uh, we provide uh, a renaming function sigma that maps uh, the new names uh, to the original names. So for example, both here, both Q and R originally came from P. So this is a new notion of uh, reduction that we call renaming reduction that we can use as an alternative uh, to uh, the standard reduction and under which uh, 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 under which the notion of continuations is closed. And uh, uh, so the first statement in particular tells us that whenever we uh, reduce a continuation, then that reduction can also be seen as a renaming reduction that produces uh, a valid continuation as its contractum. And uh, whenever we have a renaming reduction from a continuation to another continuation, then we have a corresponding renaming reduction also for the case where the continuation is instantiated. However, given that, uh, for example, if we have K where whole P takes M, given the fact that under, re under renaming reduction, this whole P can be duplicated uh, into, for instance, Q and R, the contractum of, the, of this form needs to have the instantiation adjusted according to sigma as well. How? Generally, uh, adjusting according to sigma the instantiation of P, we will obtain a multiple instantiation. So if P becomes uh, two holes Q and R, then the sigma reduction uh, reduces K to K prime and the instantiation of P to M to two instantiations, for example, of Q to M and R also to M. So uh, we see that under, under renaming reduction, the instantiation can be replicated. And then, after the instantiation has been replicated so that each of uh, the elements of the instantiation acts on only one hole, then we can uh, reduce uh, the uh, terms that have been plugged into, into the continuation independently. So in this particular case, with one reduction step, we can reduce just the first M. Uh, now that we have uh, branching continuations with multiple holes, we have to consider top, top lifting. And uh, uh, the original notion of top lifting, for example, uh, only considered one hole. 
So we have to understand how to extend that to multiple holes. And uh, it took some time to understand how to do that. But uh, uh, at last, I, I realized that there is a very uh, simple but also very strong property of uh, applied continuations, which says that uh, uh, if we take a continuation that is uh, instantiated to any number of holes uh, and any number of terms, uh, that, that applied continuation is strongly normalizing if and only if uh, all the uh, single hole in all of the corresponding single hole instantiations uh, are independently strongly normalizing under very simple uh, uh, freshness conditions that uh, uh, we can always satisfy. And this allows us to define top top lifting uh, for multiple uh, for multi hole continuations in terms of uh, top top lifting for single hole continuations. In particular, uh, we can get uh, the notion of uh, uh, reducibility of uh, continuations uh, at hole P. Uh, just by a simple adaptation of the original uh, top lifting by adding the index P to the, to the definition. Whereas the multiple case is just the uh, intersex intersection of uh, all the single old cases. Top top lifting will uh, again be defined by taking the terms that are uh, um, safe for all continuations that are, that are uh, reducible at a single hole of index P. And uh, when we have this definition, we have uh, the properties that we, that we needed, which include uh, the fact that uh, reducible continuations are strongly normalizing, and that when we have uh, a uh, continuation that uh, sig a continuation K that uh, sigma reduces uh, uh, to K prime, and is also reducible uh, at index P, then that continuation, uh, that, then the uh, contractum K prime of that continuation is also reducible. It won't be reducible at index P because the index P can, have be, can, can be uh, duplicated and renamed, but it will be reducible at index P after adjusting according to sigma, as it is expressed by this syntax. Of course, this syntax has a formal definition, but I can spare that for the purpose of uh, this talk. And then we are done, because the strong normalization is proved in uh, the usual way by saying that uh, uh, whenever a, a term M is well typed of type U, and uh, we have uh, uh, a substitution that uh, uh, assigns to every free variable uh, a term that is reducible of the right type, then if we apply the substitution to the term M, we obtain a term that is reducible of type U. And of course, since the identity uh, substitution uh, is uh, um, actually respects this condition, then we have that every well-typed term is reducible of its type, and hence it's also strongly normalizing. To conclude, top top lifting is a standard technique to prove a strong normalization for calculi with uh, certain, certain, redu certain reduction rules that uh, involve uh, nested elimination rules. So these these uh, uh, rules are known in the literature as uh, commuting conversions. Uh, this, rule, this technique, however, cannot be applied directly uh, to calculate like uh, NRC lambda that uh, involve duplicating reductions. And uh, furthermore, uh, while uh, NRC lambda was long considered to be strongly normalizing, Cooper's original strong normalization uh, proof had a subtle loophole that we found out uh, during our work and that we set out to correct. And the only way to correct it was to provide branching continuations with multiple holes and to redefine top top lifting to account for uh, multiple holes. Our technique works with also with extensions of the calculus. For example, we were able to use this technique uh, 
to prove strong normalization for an extension of an RC lambda that allows uh, to uh, define queries that mix uh, uh, set collections and bag collections, which we presented at DBPL last year. This concludes the talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's stop the video and please ask questions by typing in the Q&A box or raise your hand and then I give you speaking rights. Anyone? Okay, I start again. So you found a loophole, as you called it, in the original proof by Cooper. Correct. This raises, of course, the question, how can we be sure that your proof is correct? So do you have any plans towards formalization in a proof assistant? Right. Um, I know that uh, uh, there is a, a formalization of the original uh, top, top lifting uh, technique for uh, for, for Modges monadic calculus lambda ml uh, that was formalized, I believe, by Doxal um, in Isabel, nominal Isabel, if I remember correctly. Um, yes, would be nice to, to uh, start with that work and uh, uh, extend it uh, uh, to prove uh, to, to, to formalize this proof as well. I predict that, that some work would be needed because uh, uh, you have seen that there are some, uh, in, in my talk I mentioned that some of the, uh, of, of the properties uh, require a few uh, freshness conditions uh, uh, on uh, named holes. And those freshness conditions uh, uh, are simple to achieve, but still the, they, they will make uh, uh, theorems uh, bit more complicated with, with some uh, extra properties to carry around. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, that, this, this, is a, this is a good point. It make, it, it'll make sense to uh, spend some time in uh, uh, formalizing this. And I have some uh, uh, experience uh, in uh, formalizations, including strong normalization uh, proofs uh, in the past. So yes, it's, it's in the plans. <laughs> Right, so then we have a question by Delia. Yes, hi, uh, Wilmer, thanks for your talk. Uh, so I have a question. Your, your calculus reminds me a lot uh, the family of calculi with explicit substitutions, uh, having commuting conversions and duplicating rules. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to understand uh, if you have uh, looked at the, the techniques used to show normalization for them. Uh, short answer is no. Uh, this, this is an interesting point, actually. I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't tried to relate this kind of calculus to uh, uh, explicit substitution calculi. Uh, so uh, I guess I should uh, have a look into that and, uh, and okay. see Okay, uh, and we can discuss uh, later virtually if you want. I think that they are very, very similar. Yes, yes, That's, that, that would be interesting, thanks. Okay, is there a further question? One minute left. It doesn't seem to be the case, so thank you again, Wilmer, for this nice presentation. Thanks to you. Mm -hmm.